Good morning, YouTube. It's Tuesday here. It's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. It is a chilly one today. We have about 48 degrees in the garage. This little heater here. Should get up to about 80. Dead nuts of uh, winter time. So we'll give it a few minutes. We're going to try to get this front end kind of complete today. Last night I was messing around and I hit... There's a, there was a little bit of a burr where it steps up. I hit it with like 2,000 grit sandpaper, and it's nice and smooth. This upper part where the bearing actually sits, it fits perfectly. It's just the transition between the two. It kept getting stuck like there was a slight burr. So I hit it with 2,000. I got a bearing on. Plus, everything out here is cold. So I'm actually going to put the bearing on top of that heater. Just kind of like sit it on there. Not so it gets piping hot, but just so it... Warms it up to at least maybe room temperature or whatever the top of the panel gets. It gets warm, but like not burning hot. Huh? And then we'll see if I can get that um, other break on, on the spindle here. So here we go. Got that one on. I had to give it a little bit of a finesse with the rubber mallet. It just kind of gets a little stuck. It's, I'm assuming it's probably because the metal in out here is cold. Like I said, it's 40 degrees out here. Everything's cold. That one, I got warming up on top of here. I'm going to pack. I don't actually have a bearing packer, so I'm going to go old school and pack these by hand. And we'll get that installed. We'll get the castle nut and the cotter pin on and at least get that one into place. And then we'll work on this side. She's starting to look like a hot rod, boys. So I put the rotors on. I was managed to get both wheel bearings on, no problem. The one that I had put on the heater here went on like absolute butter. I didn't need the outer, the outer race because... They're already pressed into the rotors, which is kind of cool. So these are Mustang two rotors and they're machined to fit on Chevy style spindles, which is fine. Uh, I have to get different lug nuts and figure out what pattern these are, but they're Chevy lug pattern. I did have to run to Home Depot and I wish I would have checked these studs, but I thought I had lug nuts for them, but I didn't. Uh, I had to go get two washers. Of course, they, the three quarter inch washers they didn't have are you know, the size of this whole hub here essentially. So. I got 20 millimeter uh, flat washers, two of them, to make up space. For some reason, when you had the castle nut tightened all the way down, oh, I gotta tighten that up a little bit better. When you had the castle nut tightened all the way down, there was like a quarter inch gap between the hole and where the cotter pin went down in there. I'll show you a picture. So I figured we get some space through there. Hit those with a pair of pliers. So. Got the front wheels on. These are the wheels that were on the 51 Chevy. So they're five by four and three quarter. That size, 15 inch rim. And these are 195, 60, 15s. These were on the 51 before I got a wheel on. As you can tell, the insides are shot. We'll leave those on there for now just to wheel the car around. But I think when this is on the ground, I'm not gonna put it on the ground until I get some at least two lug nuts on each of them. This thing's really gonna drop. Roughly from the ground to the top of the frame, we're looking at about 19 inches, give or take. So the bottom portion of the frame is roughly like 16 inches. I probably have a good, at least three and a quarter to, th yeah, three, three and a quarter. We'll call it three inches to the ground underneath that tire. Obviously, there's no suspension travel because there's not, you know, a 700-pound small block. So we'll give it like, I'm going to give it three and a quarter, four and a quarter down. We'll give it five-inch drop on the high end. So that'll put roughly the top of the frame at 14 inches and probably the bottom of the frame right around 11 inches. So, which is probably going to be awesome. I'm curious about how these cross members are going to work. I don't know how far down with those engine mounts in the actual small block Chevy oil pan, how much it comes down underneath this cross member. I mean, if it hangs down low, we're going to have, not going to have an issue, but we're going to have some clearance problems. I suppose as long as the oil pan doesn't go lower than this, once it's on the ground, I mean, as long as I got a brick and get over a manhole cover and speed bump, I'm good to go, really. New England sucks for road-wise. The Corvette is five inches off the ground, so we should be good at that aspect. 
I'm not 100% set on running steelies up front yet. I really do like these uh, Ford spoked wheels that I have. These are Model A truck, I believe. 16 inch wheels, but also I'm digging the 19s with a pair of skinnies. Depending on how low this thing sits with weight on it, I might have to run the 19s to bring the front end up. It all depends. Um, I am going to run them with this size tire and rim for now. The stock wheels that came, not stock wheels, but GM wheels that came on that. On here for now, exactly with the back too, because those are on the rear axle, the S10. I'm going to get the car mocked up and rolling chassis with this, set the body on it, put the motor in it, and see where it sits. I'm not sure if this is going to be my final tire size. I'd like to see a taller, skinnier tire. I believe these are five inch rims and they are a little bit wider. So if I can get something on the narrow side, you know, around a five inch up front, just, just to have your classic, classic skinny tires in the front. And then if I can get something tall and skinny in the back to have that classic hot rod look, I'd be game with that. But if I have to run something a little on the fatter side too for some traction, I'm, I'm totally go cool with that, you know? So I'm thinking I'm going to get this portion of the garage cleaned up. It's my 4.8 block. It's an iron block. A lot of the parts, the pistons are up there, the cranks right there. So it's essentially just a block and an engine stand. I'm going to put this, I had it in that corner over there because it gives enough, the door enough room to open up. So I'm probably going to sneak this back over there. And then I'll probably put this over there as well. Or maybe I can sneak this maybe up against the wall there. Actually, that's probably a better idea for that. But put that one over there. I'm thinking the frame is very skinny. It's like, I think it's only 24 wide and maybe 35 in the back. This portion of my garage is a lot flatter than that. That's kind of pitched into that drain right there. So I'm thinking I'm going to get the frame over here. Maybe I'll build the, the rear end and do all that over here. And then when I get my friends over, I can get the body back and maybe get the body here and figure out some way to be able to move the body onto the frame myself for measurements. Or maybe I can figure out like a, a block and tackle or like some sort of pulley system to be able to lift the body up and do the frame maybe this way. I don't know. Look at the fucking cat dragged in. Fucking cat dragged in this asshole all the way from fucking an hour oh, away. <laughs> Just got back from the parts store. Mr. Trav is gone. 7 16 fine thread, open end acorn lug nuts, right? $2.49 each. $2.50 each for a lug nut. So with tax. So it's $24.90 plus tax. I had a $5 O'Reilly's coupon because, ooh, you know, you spend $100, bucks, they give you 5 bucks back, and they mark all of their stuff up retail by, you know, probably 300%. So $21.14 for 10 lug nuts. Wild, man. Wild time we live in now. So let's get these on there, make sure they fit, which I'm pretty sure they're going to fit. The front wheels will be locked on, and I'll be able to roll this chassis around at least to get it on this side of the lolly column. Wheel lugs are on. Tires are not fully torqued on, obviously, but just enough on there to make sure I can wheel this around. So I'm going to pull it off the jack stands. I kind of am curious to see where this thing sits ride height. And then I'm going to throw a jack in the back, take the back jack stands out and get it to where the frame is level and actually see where this sits. Obviously, it's not going to be fully compressed because I don't have a 500 pound small block sitting on here, but maybe I can get a general idea of uh, where it's going to sit. A friend of mine has not this front end, but a Model A drag truck. And he said once the vehicle like settled in the spring, like wore in and everything, he said it dropped roughly three inches. That's gonna be huge. And if that's the case, then I'm probably gonna to have to run really tall tires in the front. Because if this thing goes on the ground with these tires on it and it drops three inches, I'm gonna be smoking oil pans left and right. So we're gonna to have to figure something out. Or I'm gonna be making some sort of crazy skid plate. I don't know, I, I really don't know. So let's get this off the jack stands and I can get the frame level to where it's gonna be possibly and maybe get some sort of idea of where it's gonna sit.
So right there with no engine on the front, with these little rinky-dink 15-inch tires that were on that thing, that's roughly ride height on the front without a small block Chevy on it, which is, whew, let's see. The bottom of the frame is 12 inches. The top is 15 from the ground here. So when I channeled it, the body three inches, the bottom will be at 12. And just like I thought, about nine inches off the ground, which isn't too bad. The lowest point to the frame here is, sorry, my, my angles are terrible, roughly seven and three quarters. And this drive shaft here is roughly seven and three quarters. So this and this uh, engine mount is roughly the same. This is definitely pitched downward for the drive shaft angle. So, I mean, as long as it's like four inches, I should be good. That's what she said. I should be good for traveling. Um, around here at least, but the frame is dead nuts level with a four foot level and I actually hit it first shot. So let's actually see the back here is about 13 inches, but that could be because my, my floor is, is not perfectly square, but it does have a slight, actually, no, it doesn't have a rake to it. It is, it is level. My floor is definitely off. I can live with that ride height, to be honest with you. I originally wanted to slam this thing in the weeds and literally get it, like, really, really low. But even if I was to, right, I'd have that bracket somewhere around there where the radius rod would be up a little bit, and I'd have to Z-channel where the body went on anyway. So as I channel the body down a little bit, I'm sitting up a little bit higher. For my first rat rod, hot rod build, like legit build, that came to me as a running, driving car. I just made it to what it is. This is like legit me making what I want. Let's put a little weight on here. A little bit. I don't even have the kingpins fully tightened or anything. Or the, uh, I'm sorry, the perches and everything. They're kind of just kind of hand tight. But hopefully that doesn't slip out and I'll go for a ride. Well, we're going to find out. So I'm 155 pounds. So this thing is definitely going to sag with a 500 pound motor on it. Probably not a ton. I'd say probably drop about an inch and a half or two inches, I'd say. Because I probably got about a half inch, maybe an inch travel jumping. So these videos might be a little on the boring side. Because this is like the building the foundation to this. And I'm talking a lot and brainstorming and explaining what my plans are. So I think I'm going to try to pump these videos out more. So if you want to watch them, you can watch them. Or if you want to filter through them. Or if you don't want to watch them, that's fine too. So next is going to be the rear end. Hopefully, I got a couple days coming up. Maybe I can get to it and try to get some of that work done. Or if not, pull some late nights or something like that. But I want to get maybe some buddies over here, at least four of us, to get that body back in the garage. Get this frame on this side, like I said earlier. And then get the rear end where it's going to be and start welding the mounts up. Uh, these mounts are extremely thick, so I might need to get somebody with a better welder other than this 110. But at the same time... I think I'm going to take this 110, 120, this 140 Hobart. I think it's a 120 volt, whatever. And we're just going to get it hot with a torch, and we're just going to send it. Like For what I'm doing, it's going to work. So we'll get the rear end done next, and I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Check back again for the updates. We'll see you next time.